It's time to check in on those things that are streaming, those things that are going down in the theater, the offerings on television, the offerings on film. This man knows music as well. He's quite remarkable, actually. And he comes and goes on a rainbow. Oh, he is the marvelous Michael Snyder, the culture blaster. And uh, Michael, let me just say this. Congratulations on your new forum. Well, thank you. Oh, wait. What is... I, I, I think... There you go. There sir. we are. Congratulations on your new forum, and, sir. And uh, I appreciate it. And um, congratulations on your passport to Staten Island. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't I don't want to bring up medical issues. That stuff creeps me out. But I will say you look fine and fit, and I'm sure you're going to be just dandy. Um, It'll be a great-looking corpse. Go ahead. Uh, I, you know, before we go any further, uh, I do want to say how lovely it is to have uh, the voice of San Francisco as a new forum for my scribblings. And uh, you can actually go and read the, the latest article, the first article uh, that I've delivered to The Voice of San Francisco by going to thevoicesf.org. That is the URL, thevoicesf.org. Uh, the uh, and um, I'm on I, the splash page right now. I'm also thrilled that uh, our friend John Rothman is doing a podcast with the organization for them yes exactly yeah. so i you know the brotherhood is powerful speaking of brotherhood such disdain from you mark and albert earlier about my unwillingness to kowtow to the classic mark thompson time waster it's true you do not like to endure delays hey mark i never want the show to be demonetized but it really would be much worse for the show to be demichaelized so don't, don't anger me buddy <laughs> Don't anger me. Um, and I just one more quick topical note. Um, it's amazing that the members of the House GOP are trying to cut off their own Johnson, if you know what I mean. It's not a full ouster, and it's not quite a circumcision. But is there a Senate moil? That's what I want to know. Oh my God! I'm really? just curious. Buddy. I mean, it don't don't no don't do that, Albert. Don't applaud that. No. That's disgusting. Oh my God. Shall Once we, I said don't applaud it, I knew it was coming. Shall we? Uh, let's talk about movies and, and maybe some television stuff and, and some sports if we have a little time. At sure, the end. go for it, Michael. Um, as a filmmaker who was a vanguard of the uh, snarky, snarly British crime thriller wave of the past couple of decades, Guy Ritchie has had his share of hits and misses. And I'm not counting his marriage to Madonna and the terrible remake of Swept Away he did with her in the lead role. That was such a miss. Um, anyway. Uh, when he hits, he hits, as he did with the 1998 UK Cops and Criminals romp Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, his 2019 entry in the Brit crime genre, The Gentleman, yes. uh, which I loved. You and, did, and it, and I, because you loved it, I saw it, and I loved it also. And it spawned a recent and more than decent Netflix TV show. Mm. Um, his Robert Downey Jr. starring Sherlock Holmes movies, and last year, he delivered an extremely powerful Afghani war docudrama called The Covenant. And i that's actually one of my favorite films that he's done. Um, anyway, this guy, because that's his name, even directed Disney's live action Al Aladdin, which I didn't care for, but made some a bank for the mouse house. And now he has come up with the Ministry of Un Ungentlemanly Warfare. It's quite a mouthful. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Uh, which reteams him with the star of his Man from Uncle film adaptation and a former big screen Superman, Henry Cavill. So, this movie is a lively, fun, occasionally frivolous World War II action film inspired by the true story of an off the books Special Forces unit, a kind of precursor to the SAS and, and Black Ops units uh, that we are sadly familiar with now, that was formed and directed by England's Prime Minister Winston Churchill, uh, here, by the way, played by the great Rory Kinnear, um, and a handful of military officers that included a young Ian Fleming, the creator and author of the James Bond novels, who probably used his experiences uh, in this kind of surreptitious warfare to inform some of the writing about espionage that he did um, post-war. Although not officially sanctioned by the government, this band of renegades is sent on a mission to an African port that harbors Nazis, their supply ships, and U-boats. So the good guys have a plan. Use any means, no matter how dirty, to mess up Hitler's forces and thwart him from taking over the world. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
Um, sometimes the ungentlemanly warfare veers into the comedic realm, especially in its attempt to take down an arrogant Nazi mastermind uh, through uh, a Matahari type uh, operative, uh, her subterfuge. You know, it's always good when your unit has an attractive female member. Yeah, it kind of spices things up sure, in the movies. Sure, it's an important uh, uh, strain uh, run. Yeah, and in this case, she happens to be of Jewish descent, so oh. it has a little bit of spicier quality yeah. to it. Uh, but mostly, this is guns blazing, fisticuffs, bombs exploding with Cavill as the unit's lead officer. Gus March Phillips, aided and abetted by, among others, Alan Richson of Reacher, the great and uh, heavily muscled uh, star of Reacher, and a guy who's actually gone on record over the past week or so of being quite a progressive in his political beliefs. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Alan Richson is my new hero. Oh, I loved Reacher, but he's my new, new hero. Anyway, uh, Isa Gonzalez plays the aforementioned spy girl. Till Schweiger is the evil German commander. And Bob's, uh, Babs Olusen Mokon who uh, plays Dr. Mbango on Star Trek Strange New Worlds, is the ally at the African port who helps this unit uh, achieve their ends. Oh, and finally, Carrie Elwes plays M, essentially the oh. character of M back in London, the guy who's in charge of this unit uh, be, uh, below uh, Churchill. Anyway, the script, which follows the usual format and beats for one of these movies about wartime escapades, was co-written by Richie and three collaborators, and it does what it's supposed to do, you know, or daring do. Uh, this is not peak Richie, but I was diverted, and you might be too. Um, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is in theaters this weekend. Wow, he likes it. I liked it. You know, it's, it's not, 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 not awesome, but you liked it. I did. Okay. Um, let's move on to uh, something that I liked more, and you're going to blanch. I can feel it now. The horror movie of the week, since it appears that we have at least one released every seven days, is called Abigail. And that's the name of a petite ballerina who is ostensibly the 12 year old daughter of a very wealthy man. What she, cute little thing. How she could possibly be involved in any kind of horror narrative is astounding. Uh, to well, me. she's also the target of a motley crew of not so smooth criminals, yeah. Michael Jackson reference, uh, none of whom knew one another before they were hired by a guy to kidnap Abigail and hold her for ransom overnight at a secluded, somewhat rundown mansion. But Abigail is not what she seems as her captors begin to find out uh, over the course of the night. Uh, yeah, it leans into some familiar monster movie elements. There will be blood, uh, blood sucking, that is. No, oh, she's a vampire. Well, I'm not saying that. Because, okay. You know, I think people need to find out what's going on here on their own. Okay. And it leans into these aspects. And she gets blood all over that beautiful white ballerina's outfit that she's wearing. I'm not saying that happens. Okay. All right. Uh, but um, it is, in fact, a cut above many of the re uh, recent spate of scare fests, and it has a more upscale cast than many similar movies. Dan Stevens, you loved him as uh, the proper husband on Downton Abbey. Uh, he was in Godzilla, X-Kong. Melissa Barrera, uh, one of the stars of the Latter-day Scream movies, she's here. Catherine Newton, who's done a lot of genre stuff lately, uh, including Lisa Frankenstein, but she was very funny in Blockers and Lady Bird. And she also plays Cassie Lang, Ant-Man's daughter in the MCU. And finally, Giancarlo Esposito, uh, whose work has ranged from Spike Lee movies to the TV show Once Upon a Time. They're all on board. Yes, it's gory and violent, but it's sharply written by Stephen Shields and Guy Busick and filled with hair trigger set pieces overseen by the directing team of Matt Bettinelli Open and Tyler Gillette. As it happens, Bettinelli Open and Gillette directed 2019's Ready or Not, which was also co-written by Busick, uh, a similarly cool thriller about someone being trapped in a house with a deadly threat. And the secret weapon here, in more ways than one, is Alicia Weir, the kid actor playing Abigail. Oh my God, she is a force with amazing range and rage, at least in this character. We're going to hear more from her, sequel or not. Abigail is in theaters. Wow, you really liked it. I thought it was, for what it is, I thought it was really good. Now, I, again, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I, I can't take super scary, but uh, it, I'm intrigued by your enthusiasm. Yeah, but there's a lot of splatter. 
I mean, a lot of splatter, Mark. Yeah. I got a movie that's actually more your speed. And uh, look, there we have the splatter up. Thank you, uh, Kim or Albert. I don't know who. Oh, but... come on. Yeah. So it turns out that her beautiful ballerina's outfit does get uh, splattered with blood, Michael wait, wait, Snyder. Wait. No How dare spoiler you? alert. Come on, people. Yeah. I want to give you a film uh, that is something of great worth i think it's the best movie we're going to talk about um for my purposes this weekend we grown now uh it is a lovely period piece of a more modern vintage than say a world war ii movie it's screenwriter director minel begs very up close and personal look at life in chicago's notorious cabrini green projects sure. in 1992 wow. as seen through the eyes of two prepubescent best friends uh, maybe they're they're on the verge of pubescence, uh, Malik and Eric, uh, and Eric, as they navigate uh, the challenges of school, public housing, uh, and gang conflicts, and amble around the city of Chicago in search of adventure. You know, when troubles come up and the Cabrini Green community is under fire, Malik and Eric have to grow up in a hurry. Speaking of good young actors, Blake Cameron James as Malik and Gian Knight Ramirez as Eric are a joy to behold. Uh, Ms. Weir in Abigail, and now these kids, they're, they're all pretty damn good. Uh, and the adults who are overseeing their characters as best as they can are played by the lovely and magnetic Journey Smollett, the esteemed S. Apatha Merkerson, and Lil Rel Howery. Lil Rel, come on for my Lil Rel. He I is. love Lil Rel, who's not Lil anymore, by no, the way. No, he is less antic and much more heartfelt than usual. A lovely performance. He's by a talented Lil actor. I've loved my Lil Rel since he was a comic. He does he does it all. He's yep. one of those guys. You know, they say comedy harder than tragedy, and if you're a good comedian or a good comic actor, you can shift into the other. And he's wonderful here as the father of one of the boys. Um and as one might expect from their previous work, these people are all really damn good at what they do. Uh, fine performances. Um, so um, what is the plot, though? It, uh, it takes place in this kid, desperate are just, uh, environment. It's, it's a slice of life of these kids wandering around and dealing with being a kid in the Cabrini Green projects in a very turbulent time. Um, as you... Um, yeah, from the youngs to the olds, I got to say, there's pain, spirit, and determination on display, and we grown now. And at its core, it's a coming of age in questionable circumstances story oh. that echoes some aspects of the Francois Truffaut classic, The 400 Blows, with Chicago, the city of note, instead of the Paris, where the French kid of Truffaut's film, uh, Antoine Duanel, wanders and quests in 1959. Am I going to cry during this, Michael? It sounds as like I'm being set up to cry. You, and will, you, you should be moved. Uh, do you have a heart, Mark? Uh, I'm not going to oh, cry. You're working on that. All right. All right. I, I didn't want to bring up your heart, but yeah, I think you will. Got... <laughs> um, the comparison to the 400 blows is a valid one. Uh, there's an unerring sense of time and place. Uh, there's like swaths of visual poetry here, despite the kind of you know, rough circumstances yeah. uh, and uh, performances that are informed by care and compassion and honesty. Uh, I mean, Al Begg has made a sweet and gentle memory piece that lingers long after you watch it. I'm still thinking about it. The locale aside, it's a tender look at rough circumstances with loving parents trying to do their best by and for their kids. Um, we Grown Now is in select theaters. Wow. Okay. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about a kind of personal favorite of mine this week, um, and it's The Three Musketeers Part 2, Milady. Um, there was a part one, which I love, that focused on one of the Musketeers, D'Artagnan. These uh, two movies together adapt uh, Alexandre Dumas' most famous book, Les Trois Musketeers. Wow. Uh, the Three Musketeers. Look and, at you with the and, knowledge. And and, the, uh, yeah, you know, this yeah. is some fun stuff. Everybody knows what's rolling with this. Um, it's right at a most turbulent time in France's history, and the King's Musketeers are right in the middle of it as the Protestants in France are fighting the Catholics in France. The British are, like, licking their chops and wanting to invade. And all that will save us from the ministrations and manipulations of uh, Cardinal Richelieu and his uh, agent, uh, the beautiful Milady de Winter, would be the Three Musketeers. Oh, I see. And this is lush and fun, and it is a two-parter, so I recommend if you haven't seen part one, D'Artagnan, watch it. Uh, and part two, like the first part, features 
a kind of a who's who of French cinema as Milady de Winter, Ava Green, who you might know from Penny Dreadful and uh, the Bond film Casino Royale and, and other uh -huh. um, performances on her part. Uh, two of the Musketeers are played by giants of French cinema, uh, Vincent Cassel and our friend Citizen Swain's favorite, Romain Dury. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Michael, is this in French, this offering? It is, and it has subtitles. And there is a brief moment when they're what? in the UK okay. yeah. and they are uh, speaking English, but... Uh, Louis Guerrero plays uh, Louis the Thirteenth. Uh, Don't show off with your accent; it's uh, disgusting. To uh, me. That's his name. What? Uh, Vicky Kreps plays uh, his wife. I, I, here's what I'm saying: If you like this kind of costume epic, this is fun and lush and worth your time. But again, watch part one first. You know, it's such a big story; it takes two movies. Richard Lester did the Three Musketeers and the Four Musketeers in order to tell the full story. Where? Uh can we see the first one, Michael, which is the primer for this one? I would suggest you go to any streaming service and poke around and okay. you'll find it. And then this you. one will eventually be on a streaming service. But right now it's in the theaters. Yes, it is indeed. Um, I do want to close out uh, briefly uh, just to mention our pal Tim Sika, who uh, is a contributor to, at this point, uh, the Mickey after show, party. I think. Uh, the after oh, the after, is that what he ha is happening? Yeah, he's been doing the after party with Kim. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he has been a mainstay of uh, Nikki's show and was on... Uh, you know, KGO with Pat Thurston. Uh, he saw and recommended The Beast, which is another French film. This one co-starring the great French actress, Leah Seydoux, another uh, Bond veteran. She plays uh, the Bond girl in the last two uh, James Bond films with Daniel Craig. And British actor George McKay, who was in 1917 and other projects of late. Sure. And it's a time-slipping and location-shifting sci-fi movie initially set in the year 2044, where AI helps people cleanse themselves of the misery of past lives and past relationships that don't work. Wow. The science is ridiculous. Okay, well, so, let's go with the premise. So right. Sidhu plays Gabrielle, and she falls in love with these different versions of Louis, or Louis, uh, played by George uh, McKay. And it shifts from Belle Epoque, Paris, to um, contemporary Los Angeles. And so there are long swaths where they do speak English as well. Okay, because and Gail is asking more subtitles, Michael? Some, but a lot okay. of English too. Uh, I got to say, uh, Bertrand Bonello, uh, who wrote and directed this thing, uh, it's a bravura bit of filmmaking. It, it yeah. takes a lot of, of concentration and effort, and it shifts back and forth, but I, it was very rewarding to me. The performances are really wonderful. And I have to say, Leah Sedu, uh, she uh, plays four different versions of herself. And, and they're all gorgeous. Well, they are. And she's really, really wonderful. Um, and it's uh, definitely worth checking out if you... You know what? There's a phrase I used to hear about, like, kind of Sibelius and Tchaikovsky and Charles Ives' compositions. Difficult listening. You got to concentrate. This could be difficult viewing for some, but I thought oh, the piece was very, very good. Uh, it is um, in select theaters, and I believe it could be available soon, if not already, for streaming. Man, you've really covered some great movies, it seems, than some fun, different kinds of film. That's why we always count on you for that. I cover the waterfront, Mark. The um do uh, you have three or four TV recommendations? I'll be quick about this. You must, because I am out of time, Michael. Uh, I have to um, point out that, you know, if you have these streaming services, uh, these are recommendations, but, you know, it depends on the genre. I will kick it off with Ripley, which is a miniseries adaptation of the work of the author Patricia Highsmith. Uh, and it's... Um, oh, um, it's been preceded by movies like Purple Noon and The Talented Mr. Ripley to tell the tale of con artist Tom Ripley, who bilks wealthy, well-to-do people and slips away as best as he can. In this case, uh, Andrew Scott, the British actor uh, known for Sherlock and, uh, and various other projects. He was the hot priest on Fleabag. He plays con man Tom Ripley, and he was born to play this character, even more so than Matt Damon, who play, uh, played him in The uh, Talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, lots of this is set on the Amalfi Coast. It's the early 60s. It's shot in shimmering, glistening black and white. Some of the supporting actors include Dakota Fanning, uh, who is, uh, she's always been a terrific actress, and it's great to see her get work in the wake of her younger sister, you know, getting starring roles in a, a variety of things. But both Dakota and Elle are talented, and God, um, Ripley 
was satisfying on so many levels to me. Wow, that's interesting because I, um, uh, I've i seen it. I, I just kind of skipped over it. I thought that Saltburn was a bit of rip, uh, talented, Mr., Mr. Rip, Mr., uh, talented Mr. Ripley. You are correct insofar as, uh, as I said, it reminded me of Patricia Highsmith's sure, novels. Sure. Uh, and so, uh, but but you've gotten me now, maybe on board. You think it was really a great watch? It's huh? lovely, and it's like, and uh, yeah, it's in black and white. But do you want to spend a little time on the Amalfi Coast? Yeah, and exactly. Watch and that is really cool. And so. uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep it short here. Fallout is my other big recommendation. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime Video, and it is a dystopian future uh, saga based on a video game, but. Don't let that put you off. Uh, Walton Goggins uh, is fantastic uh, as a, a gunslinger from an early 50s alternate version of America that is devastated by atomic war. And this is wow. decades later. Is it funny? It's because Walter Walt Goggins is sort of a isn't he a comic actor? Walton, no, Walton Goggins is a serious actor. He oftentimes plays in like Elmore Leonard adaptations. Oh, really? Okay, then I'm thinking of somebody else. But he is uh, one point here. Kyle MacLachlan uh, is one of the supporting actors. Uh, again, Ella Purnell is the young heroine who has to navigate a post nuclear wasteland years down the road. So it swings between eras. Uh, you get this kind of faux early fifties in L.A., and then you get the devastation many, many, many years later wow uh, fallout completely uh, kicking butt on amazon prime video uh i'm not thinking of somebody else he was in vice principals and he was very funny and that's why i thought of him as a comic actor he again um, if you can do comedy yeah you can and, and, and do he comedy. does play that straight i mean but it's funny so the, in, in that um we like palm royale uh you know uh, uh totally courtney cannot stop watching palm royale, palm royale on apple tv we'll just throw that last one in yeah. uh stars Kristen wig as one of her um, fretful, manipulative characters, and she is tremendous in the in the role. But you also have phenomenal supporting actors in, in this thing. One of whom is Ricky Martin. But yeah, uh, you know, um, and he kind of lost the accent for it. I was very impressed. Uh, yeah, uh, but Palm Royale is what we're talking about. Palm now. Royale you're, is you're on, looking at a picture of Fallout, but well, it's Palm <laughs> Royale that we're Palm Royale is in, uh, on uh, Apple TV, and uh, I mean, and, when you have. Uh, grand dames of uh, Palm Beach in the early 60s who were trying to keep the outsider played by um, uh, Kristen, Kristen Wiig on Wiig. the outside yeah. while she is waiting for uh, apparently her great aunt to die a woman played by Carol Burnett lying on her deathbed. Who is brilliant in this. She eventually... She eventually comes to. Yeah, of. which is phenomenal. But, you know, they, they aren't messing around here. Uh, you know, I just really got a big kick out of Palm Royale, and I do uh, recommend it. it if you like, Allison Janney's in it. It's, a, it's, a, it's some great performances. Tongue-in-cheek soap opera yeah. parody, which you'll enjoy. Uh, Ripley, also the Amalfi Coast a set story that we are maybe familiar with through the talented Mr. Ripley and uh, other offerings. Uh, Michael really likes it. It is a streamable now on Netflix. The Beast is the film that um, Michael uh, really likes. Yeah, it, uh, It's it, a toughie, but yeah. It's a toughie, but he likes it. Sophisticated. Wow. The Three Musketeers, Milady. Uh, Les Trois Mousquetaires. Rollicking swordplay and action in a famous historical circumstance. Directed by Frenchies. Martin Boulevard. Oui, c'est vrai. Merci. And uh, he really liked it. He says you've got to see the first, you've got to see part one of The Three Musketeers, yeah. which you can see probably streaming somewhere. Uh, part one, D'Artagnan introduces the fourth musketeer. We Grown Now, written and directed by, uh, is it, how do you say it? Manel Big. Manel Big. Uh, Blake Cameron James. Uh, a lot of pretty, uh, pretty cool stars. Yeah, Journey Smollett and uh, and yeah, your pal Lil Rel that are both really first. It's rate. the uh, story of knocking around uh, Chicago yeah, in, an, the, in an area that's really been you know plagued by every social ill imaginable, right? Yeah, and these kids just going through their quasi-innocent lives uh, trying to kind of uh, survive. You know how Michael likes his horror? He also recommended Abigail. He really liked it. It's about a ballerina who's, who's been kidnapped, but her kidnappers are in for a surprise. They are indeed. And uh, finally, he started this session off with the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare by Guy Ritchie. 
Alan Richardson, Kerry Elwes. He said it's okay, not yeah. Guy Ritchie's best, but not bad. Henry Cavill, I mean, he's Superman. He's, uh, yeah. you know, he's... How could it miss? Napoleon Solo. You know what it is? It's a popcorn muncher. Oh, he, that's cool. Period. But it's only in theaters right now. At the moment, but yeah, you know, it's something, it's a Saturday night. Let's watch this, you know. Let's recommend again Michael's new spot where you can read him, The Voices. The, it's called The Voice of San Francisco, but... The website is thevoicesf.org, thevoicesf.org, the voice of San Francisco. And you can, what's your latest piece there, Michael? Uh, a little something about uh, uh, East meeting West, a uh, discussion of uh, the wonderful uh, movie. Uh, it's uh, the latest Vim Vendors film called Perfect Days and the Shogun and Tokyo Vice TV shows. Oh, Prestige yeah. Shows. So Good I'm for you. The, the meeting of, of cultures. And well, you're a great writer, and I can't wait to get into it. And again, it's thevoicesf.org. It is. And uh, it's the voice of San Francisco. Thank you, Michael. We adore you. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye bye, Michael. Go Giants. Wow. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.